so we've talked about the hero's journey uh, in previous videos, and I mentioned in passing that certain segments of the classic hero's journey, this classic structure for myths, some of these do not show up in a lot of mecha series, and I want to explore now why that might be. We certainly see a call to adventure and road of trials, but we don't see like some of these others a lot. So what may be going on? Um, so the first one to look at, I think, is the vision quest. Classic thing in traditional stories. Think in Star Wars Empire Strikes Back of Luke going into the jungle cave in Dagobah and having that slow motion fight with Darth Vader. Classic vision quest. We don't really see these in Mecha much. Granted, new types do have their moments of sort of vision and clarity and the glowy anime nudity as they meet in strange space. Um, that's about the only place that you see that in Mecha. Why? Well, I think part of the reason is that, frankly, the idea of the vision quest, the idea of having some vision of your future, feels a little weird and new agey and just kind of anachronistic to modern audiences. We don't really buy that anymore. I think the idea of the, the vision has been, um, if not disproven, then very much devalued in modern society as kind of hokum, as just delusions, basically. And it's kind of hard to justify them. Um, instead, in Mecca, trauma tends to tr trigger revelation for the Mecca pilot. Something really bad happens to them, and that causes them to reevaluate uh, their views on things, and that serves a similar role as the vision quest in a traditional story, where the vision quest kind of gives them some symbols and some structure for uh, where they're going. Uh, instead, the trauma says, oh, I see how things are bad, and that we must do something to change it, right? So I think, really, trauma is the vision quest equivalent in Mecca, or the closest uh, one. We also don't see a meeting with the goddess, which is a classic thing in um, traditional stories, Galadriel uh, in Lord of the Rings, the meeting with Galadriel uh, initially is a classic meeting with a goddess character. Now, to be clear, we don't necessarily mean a literal goddess. We mean the powerful figure representing, you know, female magical power. Uh, women, traditionally, in a, in a lot of um, earlier societies, were seen to have a lot of magical power because they literally could create life. Life came out of them, so they had this the power of creation. Uh, so you often saw this sort of matriarchal goddess figure showing up. Or it could be like a witch or something else uh, uh, like that. But that was usually more woman as temptress. Um, but you often saw this sort of meeting with some kind of, you know, representative of this sort of magical goddess uh, figure. Why don't we see this? I think a lot of it is because women today are demystified, right? Um, they are not this mystical, magical, strange other creature. There are co-workers. There are friends. We go hang out and have drinks with them after work. Um, so it's really hard to justify that idea of this strange goddess figure in a mecha series, particularly one set in the future where presumably women are um, you know, even less magical, if you will, than they were seen in the past. Um, I do think that you could make a, uh, a case for the idea that the mecha is itself the goddess. The protagonist um, has this initial sort of awe-inspiring experience with the mecha, as a sort of overpowering, you know, uh, figure, and then not to stretch it too, you know, uh, uh, you know, too fully, but the mecha then envelops the hero, a very female, you know, um, uh, gesture, um, and the, the hero goes into a spot in the mecha that is eh, not that far away from the womb, right? So you can see the mecha as being sort of this goddess figure, especially because the hero does um, initially get this gift from the Mecca, which is kind of the Mecca's power itself, and comes to terms with it over time. Whereas traditionally the Mecca gave, or whereas traditionally the goddess gave the hero some gift that was useful later on, the Mecca itself is the gift, and it is kind of coming to terms with the power of that gift and the responsibility of that gift that is more the hero's journey this, this time around. So I think we've just kind of shifted that around um, more in Mecca and kind of internalized it into the Mecca itself. We also don't typically see the Master of Two Worlds trope. Um, and for this, again, think back to Star Wars A New Hope, where at the end, Luke Skywalker you know, blows up the Death Star, proving that he is both a skilled technological pilot in his modern world and also, a, uh, also in touch with the mystical force power. Right? He is master of both of those things, or as close to master 
of the Force as anyone gets in, at that point in Star Wars. Um, again, a typical trope. Um, you know, Odysseus comes back and is able to be both the adventurer you know, and, and have all of the respect as, as the adventurer, and also the respect of being a, a Greek husband and father and you know, father figure. Um, the end of The Incredibles. The, the, the family gets to be both a domestic family and superheroes. You know, um, they, get, they get everything, right? But we rarely see this in Mecca. Uh, why? Because war is stupid and bad, <laughs> right? The protagonist's job is to fight and kill people, and if he is the master of that world at the end, it justifies his role in that, which is very hard to reconcile with this idea of war being stupid and bad. Um, and so instead, um, I think we see some different things. So let's look at some of the hero's journey segments that I would um, uh, substitute for those for today, I think we see a lot. And I would actually um, insert before the call to adventure, the invasion. You see this very commonly in Mecca, this idea that you have a stable world, which is then invaded by some external force, um, possibly in the past, um, think Britannia and Code Geass. And this, you know, this uh, invasion upsets the balance and is thus the reason why the hero has to pile the Mecca why they have to engage in war. It's the justification for the whole thing. Now, obviously, you have invasions in other heroic stories, but they're not as common a motivation, right? Usually, the hero is not going out to fight because somebody is you know, coming, into their, um, um, coming into their nation and, and, and destroying things. Even when that happens, it's more of an, um, an initial instigator or it's more of a sort of background element as opposed to you know, the... the fundamental underlying problem the hero is trying to solve, right? Happens occasionally, but not too much in old stories. But it's often like the thing in the Mecha series, right? They're trying to stop this invasion. Then at the end, I would actually suggest instead of the Master of Two Worlds, you see one of two things. Either the return to normalcy, in which everything kind of goes back to the way it was before. Now, the heroes may be different. The heroes may have new jobs at this point. Things may have shifted around a little bit. But basically, the world is allowed to return to what it was like before the invasion or before the inciting incident, before the call to adventure. Everything is normal again. And you do see this often in, um, uh, in traditional heroic stories, but usually that is in the context of the hero is now master of two worlds. Um, in this the hero has put aside their old, um, you know, warlike pilot self. Things are now back to normal in the sense that there is no more war. There is no more of that thing that the hero was doing, one of the things to be a master of. And indeed, often the hero is a master of neither, right? They are neither a pilot now, nor are they a, you know, skilled participant in whatever they were doing before. They are just a person now. Um, or you get the exile, in which the uh, hero decides to go off and be somewhere else. The hero cannot remain in society. The hero must um, uh, exit society because the hero is kind of tainted in a way. Or the hero is just um, too good of a pilot or too um, dangerous to stay in normal society so, so that the, the pilot must leave and be separated from regular society. And you see this fairly often, I think, in Real Robot. Um, so yeah, I would say those are, those are pretty, pretty common. Um, now, I also want to talk briefly about the various social values that you see often in mecha series, both Super Robot and Real Robot. But that's going to have to be the next video that will do it for this one. Thank you very much for watching.